On today's episode of P-Dubs Arcade Loft, we're going to take a look at my latest pickup that I just got yesterday. That's right, we got a Silver Strike Bowling Pedestal. Picked this up off of Offer Up here locally in the Arizona area. Now these uh, Silver Strike Bowling Pedestal stands, these are a little bit older. I think this one was manufactured around 2014 or so. Um, it does have firmware on it from 2017. It's in pretty good condition, but we're going to show you some things that we're going to have to kind of fix up on this one. Again, just cosmetic stuff. Mechanically, everything works great. So taking a look at the condition of this pedestal, the buttons are in great shape, no concerns there. And the artwork on the control panel itself looks really good. It almost looks brand new. I just had to wipe it off real quick because it was in this guy's garage. He did put new rollers in the trackball. Let's take a listen here and see how well this trackball sounds. Sounds great, right? Now taking a peek here, this just has the bowling game on it. That's it, no other games. I literally took this out of the SUV, brought it in the house, dusted it off just a little bit and started capturing footage. Obviously we need to figure out where we're gonna put this thing. So talk, looking at some of the stuff we're gonna need to do here, we're gonna need to get some white vinyl artwork uh, for the uh, little side panels here. These are supposed to be white, not brown, as you can see here due to the age of the machine and use. It's peeled off, it's gone away. You can see a little bit of the vinyl next to the screws. And the white vinyl artwork replacement is gonna be super, super simple, and that's gonna be pretty cheap as well. So no worries there, we'll get that all fixed up looking nice, as you can see here. You can see what's barely left out of what's peeled off from the past. I'm not too worried about it because minus that and some scratches on the side that I can clean off or do some touch-up paint, overall the sides of the pedestal's in great shape. Now looking at the front of the pedestal, as you can imagine, the front part here has been kicked around a lot more. We got a lot more scratches and gouges in the paint and things like that, but nothing we can't fix and get cleaned up looking nice. Now these can be purchased or back then as well as today for home use or for uh, commercial use. This one was originally set up for commercial use, but the guy I bought it from, he, he must have not been the original owner either because he had bought this used as well. So it is set up for commercial use. Uh, you know, we do have all of our coin uh, receptors in here, our, our little coin box on the inside. Uh, luckily, we got the keys to open the front panel, and you'll notice right here we got another lock. There's our volume up-down buttons for changing the volume on the pedestal itself. Uh, again, if we're running this with HDMI, the audio is going to come through the HDMI on the TV speakers. We really don't need to worry about the pedestal speakers. And then, of course, we have another key hidden in here. This key, of course, is going to get us inside of the coin return so we can see our coin box and things like that. The guy I bought it from, he had it in his garage. He had been using it personally for a bit. Uh, he said it was kind of like a COVID thing, looking for something to do during the COVID eras. So uh, he was ready to offload this thing. And I'm ready to find a permanent home for this in my arcade collection. And of course, we're gonna keep it set up to free play, but we're gonna keep all this stuff in here in case if we do end up flipping this machine in the future. There's your little coin return right there. And once we shut it and take a look once one more time at the coin door itself, it's a little bit dirty and it probably needs some touch-up paint and some good cleaning. And I'll notice right there that on this one little front edge, some of that, uh, you know, side tape, it, it's not really T-molding. It's kind of like a plastic, uh, plastic border. Some of that's peeling off, so we'll have to fix that as well. But again, that's all easy cosmetic stuff. Let's take a look at the hardware. What actually runs these incredible technologies pedestals? Well, as you can see here, here's our buttons. Here's our micro switches. Got a really nice trackball. The wiring inside looks nice. Actually, the inside of the machine was pretty clean considering it's been in a garage for a very long time. Had some dust and dirt on the exterior and stuff I got to clean off. Trackball looks good. Looks like the trackball was made in 2014. But when I power on the machine and it shows me what firmware version's on there, it does give me a 2017 date. Got some stains here. Gonna have to get this all cleaned up. There were some spiders in here, which I already got rid of. Taking a look here, there's the actual PC running the whole thing, and everything looks to be pretty clean and good shape. The PC, the cables, the wiring, everything looks really, really good. Have several options on how to display this in order to play the games, and of course, we're going to be using HDMI and all that kinds of stuff. On the opposite side, we have what looks to be the encoder board where the uh, trackball, where the buttons, all that stuff plugs in, and then it, from there it plugs into the PC to operate all your controls. 
Uh, again, I was surprised at how clean that was. Taking a look on the inside, all the way down to the bottom, you don't really see any kind of uh, rodent or insect stuff going on. Again, there were a few spiders and some cobwebs, but that's about it. Nothing too crazy. This lock is broken, so I'll need to replace this lock. Again, small things, small cosmetic things. Hardware-wise, it runs great. So if you pick up a used machine that just has some cosmetic issues, that's the kind of stuff I love purchasing. Here's the back of the machine. Again, just some dirtiness, cleanness. Might need some touch-up paint. Nothing too crazy. We'll make this thing look pretty again. I'm not too worried about it. Got that little back flap open because I was testing different wires and cables. But again, all we're using is the power cord for the unit and an HDMI cord to the TV that I have uh, temporarily mounted on a bookshelf right behind me. I did this quick setup just so I could get this up and running. Obviously, this pedestal stand doesn't come with the other piece that you can mount a TV on. Yeah, I could always get one of those separately or just buy any TV mount or mount a TV on the wall, etc. cetera, uh, to play this thing. So I got lots of options just by picking up the pedestal stand. I mean, typically the pedestal stand goes for about two grand, even though this thing's a little bit older than the newer Incredible Technology stuff. If you check eBay and other listings where people are trying to offload these things, they're selling them for over two grand, sometimes three grand, including all the uh, the stands and stuff for the pedestal uh, to add a TV mount, etc. cetera. Uh, but dude, I got this for 1200 bucks. So I got a pretty good deal on this in my opinion. Now, obviously when you fire it up, you just have the one bowling game and you can choose between three different bowling levels. This is the Silver Strike Bowling Live, so I can connect it to the internet for the uh, online stuff, which I'll do uh, probably in the next video after I get this thing all cleaned up. You can customize the equipment. You can choose different color balls. You can choose between lefty, righty, you could choose between male, female, and you could also change their heads, which basically chains, changes everything or their face. So you'll see they've got about six different versions here. Because I'm a pale, pasty Irish guy, I'm going to go with this ginger dude right here. Let's take a peek. Let's find him. Where'd he go? There he is. All right. We're going to play as the ginger. And pretty much just like their Golden Tee golf games, it all depends on the way you pull back and push forward on the track balls in order to, you know, add any kind of uh, spin uh, to the balls to try and hook it, etc. And if you do it wrong, well, you're going to make a mistake. So what's really cool about this game is it's it's a little bit challenging. Like I just started playing it and uh, been learning as I go. Different ball weights as well. They got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pound balls. So depending on what ball you pick, it also will change how much it spins, how much it curves, where you want to line up for all these shots, etc. Oh man, too much spin there, right? I wasn't far enough over to the right if I'm going to throw it there. So learning how to play is super, super fun. And you know, the graphics and everything look pretty cool. I like that this has HDMI out. So if I wanted to do a live stream and, and play this game with you guys, we can easily capture the screen and audio and and show you how much fun this uh, this arcade game is uh, to play. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about having this in my house. These type of games have a lot of replay value, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about adding this to my collection, and hopefully once we actually get all these renovations and remodeling underway, I'll be able to find a really cool place to stick this in what I'm calling the new arcade room once I get that up and running. Let me know what you guys think of my latest pickup. I'll uh, leave you here with some gameplay so you guys can check this thing out, and uh, make sure you guys come back for the next set of videos as well as live streams as we fix and... Uh, fix this, restore it, you know, just cosmetically, as well as uh, do some gameplay live stream once we figure out all the tricks of the trade here. Straighter is greater. All one. He ends up with a wrap. Here's a demonstration in precision. Sweet. Fair delivery. Leaves the baby split. Now that is a beauty. 
football. Player at the line. safe with the delivery. This guy couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> 